Victor Borgi. The renowned pianist once told a friend that he could tell time by his piano. The friend was not convinced, so Borgi proceeded to prove his point. He immediately began playing a resounding march. And only moments though, there was a noise banging on the wall and a voice on the other side screamed, Stop that noise! Don't you know it's 1.30 in the morning? Birds may be able to tell time by his music, but he could not stop time. Only God can do that. Have you ever noticed that time is like an ending river? And once your crop is launched on it, there is no turning back, no stopping it. Like a river, which may wind through a meadow, there are seasons in our life when it seems the time moves very slowly. Then there are other times when it seems that the crop of our life is carried faster and faster through the turbulence of white water rapids. And more than anything else, we would really like to slow things down just for a little while, but we cannot. Mario Andretti was like that. Remember the famed Italian race car driver? As he talked with reporters before driving his final Indianapolis 500. At the age of 54, he said, It's not my fault that the years go by. If I could make a deal with somebody and buy five or six years of this life, I would. Think of it, trading his millions for just a few more years of big performance racing. He could not buy time, and neither could one of the world richest, if not the richest woman in the world, as she lay on her deathbed the best doctor in the world at her side, trying to sustain her life. Queen Victoria, whose greatest isles were at the peak of their glory, cried out, My kingdom, my kingdom, for an end of time. A strange thing, this entity that we call time, scientists, philosophers, and theologians strive to understand it. Yet, at the very time they ponder it, all of them are controlled by it. I can tell you what you already know, that if you don't use it, you lose it. I can also remind you that the farther you travel on the river of life, the faster it seems to carry you along. We talk about time, but we can actually do very little about it. The side of eternity, time is a strange and fixed commodity, and when it's gone, it's gone. God trades neither money nor kingdom for more of it. The only things we can really do about time is learn to use the moment, to take advantage of what lies in our grasp. The sad thing is that, so often when there is a rainy day, people are distraught because they can't go somewhere or do something. If there is any wisdom acquired in aging, it surely must include the importance of using time wisely, of seeing what you mean to say, why the person you love can still hear those words, of writing the letter you've been intending to write while a friend can yet read it. I used to wonder how just God really is in fixing a person's eternal destiny based on such a short period of perhaps 70 or 80 years. Yet, we are such creatures of habit that few would really change a lifestyle so that a person will live centuries beyond the biblical pre-score and ten or 70 years. God has given you today to make preparation for eternity. As Benjamin Franklin once said, do you love your life? Then use time wisely. Make today count for that the stuff life is made of. In other words, time is a part of God's gracious goodness. Take time to get to know God, to love Him, and to use this day to glorify Him. Like the psalmist once said, Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom.